Thank you so much, uh, Sister Belinda, for the prayer. We are going to now introduce our guest speaker for this morning. And he is a friend of ours, a brother, and uh, a pastor in the making. Um, and he is none other than Pastor Nkosinati Makanya. And we pray that God may help you this morning and empower you by his spirit and move within you and to speak to his people through you and over to you, my pastor. And may God bless you as you speak to each one of us. Um, can you switch on your microphone? If you can, um, you are still muted. Right, thank you so much. Yes, Over yes. to you, my pastor. Yeah, we Am can I hear audible? you. Am I audible? The, you are audible, but there is some, some feedback. Just try once again. Could be that you okay. you have uh, two devices. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, maybe try to switch off one. Good morning. Good morning, my pastor. Yes. Uh, Good, good morning, everyone. Hello. Good morning, my pastor. We can hear you now. Uh, Thank you so much. You can go ahead. And the, the, the theme for today, it is mission. Today, we are, we are, we are talking about mission. Um, in, the, in the 1940s, the USA ship line proposed to build a new ship called the SS United States at a close to 80 million uh, 80 million dollar project it was going to be the biggest ship and in, in America and the fastest in the whole world upon hearing about this project the US government invested 50 million uh, 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 on the project. The government intended to use this ship as a troop carrier that will be able to transport about 10,000 troops in a time of war. In 1952, the SS uh, United States finally set sail, but it didn't set sail as a troop carrier. It set sail as a luxury liner that catered for the rich or the rich people. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, is a simple reminder that the church is a troop carrier, not a luxury liner. The church is a war vessel and not a tourist attraction. We are on the mission for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the last command of Jesus must remain our first priority as the church or the first priority of the church as a whole. This generation must ensure that the Great Commission does not become the Great Omission. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 15 is part of the dialogue that Moses had with God. So Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with us, we will not go. Hence, part of the commission is the promise that Jesus will be with us till the end. Amen. Before we can open any scripture, I would like to have a word of prayer. Dear God, we are grateful for every moment that you borrow us in life. Today, we have gathered this morning, God. 
because you want to start a week remind, remembering that you have a mission assigned to us as a church, and that is to go and make disciples for you, O oh Lord. We pray, therefore, Lord, that you encourage us through your weight and through your power, God, and by the presence of your Holy Spirit. Because this we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a little story about myself. When I received this gospel, I was in Kosi Mampuru prison. In fact, I like the fact that some of the participants in this prayer meeting today, I actually first saw them or met with them when I was in that prison. And this is how I found the Lord. When I was still smoking the Dacha in D3 section and seated there with my friends, next to me was a, just a rubbish bin. Inside that rubbish bin was a book called Steps to Christ. I don't know what happened really that allowed me or that enabled me to reach to that book without any shame, put it on my pocket because it was just a small book, put it on my pocket and then left for my room because I was still in isolation at the time. I stayed alone in the cell and therefore when I got bored after smoking my daha or which you would call marijuana or ganja, isolo, whatever name you use for it. I smoked those things. And I was in a single cell at the time. After smoking, I got a hold of this book that I had just picked up during the day. I read this book. Let me tell you, my brother and sister, up until today, my life has never been the same. There, has, there is something that we say when we are in prison. When you are in prison, you don't, uh, um, confine yourself with the outside world. Actually, when we look at people who come from outside to visit us in prison, we, we will refer to them as people from Africa, meaning we, we saw ourselves in a different continent, yet in the very same continent as Africa as every one of us. We stay, when you stay there, life is different. Things are done in a different way. Survival is the, is, the, is, the, is the key. That's what you want to, to achieve, to survive every day as it comes to you. So as I read this book and meeting with the Lord, I got a, a new excitement that I had never had before. You know, that book changed my life such that I saw myself starting to argue with religious bodies that were there in prison uh, 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 that were coming in prison in numbers. Unfortunately, I was still in the maximum security uh, where we could not have an Adventist church. I remember we were told that when we inquired that the Adventist church was only in the medium section. We then started to pray. After that prayer and receiving the Lord and everything, we, 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 we saw a post that said, uh, 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 this course that was presented by Brother EZ and, and, and Dr. Sanchinkanda, uh, 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 which was called VOP, Voice of Prophecy. That's when I started to get introduced to the true doctrines of the church. We went through that course, graduated that course, but I felt more hunger, such that in the book that I had found, was the address of where it actually came from, I purported. So I wrote to that address. Interesting enough, just after two weeks, I got the response that they had received my letter and they would like to see me. It was brothers from, it was brothers uh, 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 from, 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 from Cape Town, who had flew from Cape Town to, to, to Johannesburg to come and see me, this letter, carried weight to them. I didn't know at the time because I was yearning for more things to read at the time. The only book I had was Steps to Christ, no Bible, no whatsoever. So I'm saying, as we go and we carry stuff with us, Jesus say, we are like sowers. We plant a seed as we grow. But unfortunately, as we go to plant, there are seeds that fall on the pathway. There are seeds that fall 
on the rocky ground. There are seeds. This guy is not planting seeds are falling. I suppose steps to Christ was one of the seeds that fell on my ground. And fortunately, it found me at the stage whereby I was really in need of a solution. I had given up hope. I had given up anything. I come from uh, 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 my father's side of the family, are uh, Adventist, but I actually was not more introduced to the faith as such because of my mother's side was more where I was inclined to most of the time. But as I grew up and meeting with the Lord and finding these doctrines, I believed God used a rubbish bin to preach to me because at that time, it was at the time whereby no one could have told me about God. Hence, I say I had given up at the time. So people that played a huge role were people that were coming from outside world to our inside world, different atmosphere, not fearing what could have happened to them. You know, when you hear stories about prison, I lived in prison. I don't tell stories that I don't know. I tell stories that I have evidence of because part of our witnessing is to possess evidence for Jesus and we testify for or against Jesus. I mean, I'm testifying for Jesus because of what he had done in my life. So the, 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 the essence, therefore, of being a Christian in our times, it is to go ye, therefore, save people's life. Today, when my brother Ito introduced me, he said, soon to be a pastor. Just imagine from a book in the dustbin to what God can do with that book. I'm saying if we avail ourselves in the ministry, if we avail ourselves in the ministry, the seeds that will fall in the pathway will bump into people. And you know, as you go into town, whereby there's a, a, a large crowd, and you are carrying a juice or anything else, you keep on bumping into people. You know, things that spill over, you know, from you to other people, you understand? It determines whether it's going to ruin them or it's going to bless them. So it depends on the stuff that we carry as Christian, that as we go to minister outside there, what do we have inside us that will spill over people that is either going to save them or destroy them. So we need to be faithful witnesses of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, in 1886, Dr. John Pemberson, an American pharmacist, uh, concluded a new non-alcoholic beverage uh, in, the, in a three-legged brass kettle in his backyard. Uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, since its main ingredients were coca leaves and cola nuts, it was named Coca-Cola. Today, it dominates the world's soft drink market. Survey has revealed that 97% of the world has heard of Coca-Cola. 72% of the world has seen a bottle or a can of Coca-Cola, and 51% of the world has tested Coca-Cola. Today, more than 1 billion drinks are consumed every day. How did this happen? Well, years ago, the Coca-Cola company made a commitment that everyone on this planet would have a taste of their soft drink. So they went out all to make, uh, uh, to market it. Uh, 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 of uh, aggressively, dear brothers, if men can commit themselves to make a, cup, a carbonated soft drink known to the world, can we not commit ourselves to make our wonderful savior known to the world if we are all as uh, committed to Christ as we should be. If we have, have, have tasted the sweet blessedness of knowing him as our savior and our Lord, we cannot therefore make a mistake by not committing that everyone on this planet will be, will be able to taste the, the, the 
this blessedness that is found only in him. I have tested this blessedness. I live daily trying to witness, telling people where God has taken me to what I am today. When I went to study in Solusi, you know, you do all this background check. You do all these medical tests because I was going to a different country. It was just at the moment when I had said to the Lord, yes, Lord, I will serve, serve you. Then I was notified by the correctional officer that your sentence had been cut by six months. So I was ready in 2017 when I was supposed to have left in 2018. God prepared me. Today, this year, I'm doing my final year in theology studies. And next year, when God is good and willing, I will be graduating as a theologian in Solusi University. This is what God can do. I am a living testimony and a living evidence of what Jesus is really capable of. Dear brothers and sisters, it is my wish that as much as Coca-Cola was able to market their products throughout the world and everyone know about their product, know this about the product that comes from Jesus. He says, the end will not come until the gospel has reached to the ends of the world. It is therefore our duty as the troops set on this uh, a ship troop to be shipped and for battle. There is war that, we are, that is going on outside there. We see it every day on the news and in every aspect of our, of our spheres of influence in life. And I believe God wants to use us, this generation in particular, mightily to prepare his people for the second coming. Lest we forget why we are called as a church. I, 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 I promote prison ministry because that is where I first met my Jesus. This is where I first met my Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to encourage you with these words to not forget the brothers in prison. Paul says, as if you have been captured with them. May the Lord bless you all this morning as we ponder upon these words. Brothers, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I'll just request that in our prayer, we remember the brothers inside there. Let the seeds drop also in them. There is a ground that God has prepared that is ready. You just don't know. Just go there inside and witness Brother Idu. I met Brother Idu. He came to visit us inside. I met Brother Izzy, Dr. Chinkanda. Most have I said, I, said I, I, I met them when I was inside. So this is a tangible testimony. This is a tangible testimony. There is evidence and witness of what I say. God has saved me, and I believe he can save anyone else. God bless you all. Amen. My brother, you, you are a dynamite of the Lord, and clearly the Lord is using you in a mighty way. And we want to thank God for what he has done through you this morning. And I want you to just share a word of prayer as we are filing um, into our rooms for prayer. Please pray for us, my pastor. Pastor Nkosinati, are you able to pray for us? His mic is off, uh, Brother Itu. I think let's, let's, All right. let's pray. All right. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the yes, motivation yes, yes, that we received this morning. Yes. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for such a powerful message that we received that we should go out there and be your test, your testament. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our pastor, Nkosinati. Bless him in a very special way and bless him mightily. Supply to uh, his uh, 
wishes according to your wisdom in glory. As we are going to be separating in our rooms, continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen.